Right, we're going to get going. If you can ask you all to mute, so we can uh, knock out the background music. Obviously, the three speakers tonight when they come on, then you can only mute yourselves. Right, let's get going. I've put on here before when I met the, the corn dog ash. I eat corn beef. I call it corn dog. And in little this morning, I saw these corn dogs. With this uh, American theme. As you can see, they've got a Hawaiian pizza somewhere. Corn dogs, I couldn't believe it. Right, I, I'm going to try one of them. No way. That's Paul when he had it. <laughs> That's the Polish chicken. <laughs> Hey, uh, Polish anyway. <laughs> There's a bit of Pole in your uh, poor one. Uh, and my uncle was Polish. Ah, uh, see? There is in, I should have put it um, side to side, you know. <laughs> this was from uh, three weeks ago. Uh, John Murphy. Thanks, Mick. Lovely Andy's setup. Nearly perfect all the year round climate for most uh, plant needs. If you uh, control the darkness too, you get full control. Roll is bell char, sounds perfect, so as it would be hydrated in salt, regardless if it were wet. But uh, NPK is our guide, nitrates, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Good to see you. Uh... Right, we got our uh, Andy back with us. I remember, he should have put a piece on um, because I will last one it. Andy. Citrus fruits. Good man. That's what you wanted. Um, well, as I say, I've, there's on there you can see a lime and a lemon. Uh, the kumquat. Um, okay, you've got another slide, Mick. That's it. What do they call it? A mitis, that is. M-I-T-I-S, mitis. Uh, it's like a little orange. But it's got lots of little fruit. That photograph was taken probably three weeks ago now, something like that, on the Wednesday. And that plant now is just full of bloom, full of flowers, and it the smell of orange, you know, the smell of orange scent, it's it's almost intoxicating. Okay, next next one, Mick. That's the seven citrus fruits that I've got. Um, yeah, it's different sized pots, as you can see. They like they like a reasonable sized pot. Um, the the one at the far right is the uh, is a mitis. The kumquats next. Then you've got the lemon, and then you've got the lime at the far left. But there's three little plants uh, which you took cuttings of. Um, and I think they're the mitus one. Okay, next one, Mick. Crap. That's the kumquat. Um, good way of killing any citrus is to overwater them. They can't stand the roots standing in water. I always try and use rainwater. They do not like lime. So when you're potting them up, use an ericaceous compost. Oh. Um, now, citrus prefer to bask in the warmth and the sort of strong sunrise to sunset that those of us from the cooler climbs <laughs> scurry from. If it's too hot for us, they love it. Um, what you can do, you can make your own compost, but as I say, leave out lime. Um, but if you put plenty of uh, drainage in the bottom, put some something heavy in the bottom, and then if you mix in with the rest of the compost, 25% of coarse grit. That's, they like it, free, free draining. 
Okay, Mick, next next one. Yeah, that's that's um the Spanish moss. I say when I water it once a week on a Thursday when I do the fish tanks, I just take it off the hook and bung it in the tank and leave it in there for 15 then I take it out. As I say, there's there's only six pieces there, I think, but I've got 12 of them in all. Okay, next next slide, Mick. Right. This is a, a photograph of the citrus tree food in the winter. You'll notice in the um, in the winter, it's 191919 19, 19 in MPK. So it's a fertilizer. But it tells you all, all on there um, about how best to grow them. Acid compost between 5.5 and 6.5. Um, they like feed all the year round. Um, winter and summer. Okay, next next one, Mick. That's some of the uh, tilsandrias, again, the air plants. Some off the off the wall that I've got. Just bung them in the fish tank. Chuck them in there. 15 minutes again. And that and that and that's it. Done for, for a week. I could spray them if I wanted. But I find it easier and more convenient with my regime just to, just to immerse them all. Okay, next one, Mick. That's the summer one. That's got 26, 13, 13, the MPK. It's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it gives it a bit of stuff to, you know, plenty of stuff to grow in the summer, you know, the, the nitrogen, and it's slightly reduced, um, yeah, on the others. Uh, yeah, all what I do with mine is just measure it out, put it in a bit of water, um, and I use it all in one go. I mean, I've got half teaspoon uh, measures, quarter teaspoon, whatever, so I can use it accordingly. Two pints keeps it going for a little while without drowning the things. Okay, next next one, Mick. That's more of the air uh, plants, just seeing them floating on the water it just gives you an idea of what i do or how how we do it and they don't mind it in fact they appear to be thriving on it this is this is what the specialist nurseries recommend rather than spraying every so often okay next next one mick oh that was it Must has anyone got any questions on on citrus in the spring that's when you'd prune them ah uh, but don't let them stand in water otherwise you'll kill them and like i said before when it gets when it's too hot for us they love it yeah yeah and a winter low nighttime temperature i've got here is 10 degrees 50 fahrenheit is needed temperatures less than this uh they won't be at the best and will in, at the best will inhibit flowering and at the worst could kill them yeah so don't put them in a cool greenhouse over the winter bring them inside sorry. somewhere warmer yeah. oh. if you can get away with it with a gaffer <laughs> You're bound to be able to, Mick. <laughs> I'm downstairs in the living room. Yeah, anyone else got any questions? Me too. Lovely. Cheers, Andy. Okay, cheers, Mick. Glad you're on back with us, mate. Right, and that's why I, I, I sent away four. That was a couple of weeks back. That was when Andy should have originally done the talk. Right, this was uh, two weeks ago. This was waiting to them. I'm doing the putting the zoo together. 
and I saw this. You know, I've finished putting it. Well, soon get that. We just started watching this, and I thought um, I'm going to be into this, so I went back and uh, took this photograph. Was it? But uh, Pets mentioned before, uh, as you can see, the date of the film, 1998. And you remember showing the kids at school, they loved it. And I loved it and all. And obviously animals, mostly dogs and that. And uh, there's a film. So me and Pet was watching it. And then when I zoomed down a bit, Rushin was watching it and all. But a uh, Boston film. It's the sort of film I'd like to sit with my grand well I have grandkids. But uh Rosie's better than a, a, a grandkid. Because what they want to watch now. That bloody um the mass singer in it. So a lot grandchild good grandkids love it. So you've got grandkids in and watching that and they start Oh golden then it thank God they're a dog. Then you hold up. This was a uh, Advertised leisure water, um, they're all clicking on now. Um, it's weekends away breaks, plus the leisure during the day and looking after on the night. But this is the one we use during holidays. Started using these uh, 12 years ago. Basically, it's all inclusive, but uh, the mat that's that's grub and, and the plonk. <coughs> the, there's, there's different places all over the UK, but uh. More most important thing is uh, kid free, so it's adults only, but uh, which is perfect. No kids. That's what you want when you want a break. This one I put on um, during the week on, on my own uh, side. Somebody somebody mentioned the, the kids when I did the kids Castle Primary School up at school. Uh, this photo was took from me allotment um, when I used to drive the kids down before PC Brigade Health and Safety stopped me bringing the kids down. Well, they didn't stop me, well, they did. But the way they, they'd stop you is you have to do a risk assessment every time the kids come down. And it was a pain in the Aris. That's why eventually I did a school, school allotment on the school grounds. But uh, all these, they've got, they've got to be 18, 19 now. I think he, I've got to, he's, he's got to be 18. He's got me to go out for a drink with him. Or close, which I shall be doing soon. I mean, glad he's there, bloody caucus. I always had to take some at home when they come down the plot. And they'd, they'd nick me fruit, going round and all. But they loved it. I loved it. Pity it finished. Right, uh Callum Clooney, as you can see there, Beach Grove. Uh, I've known him a few years now. Uh, I watched the program uh, twice. The last time was uh, the old chap. He, he was uh, built a raised bed, and then he was kneeling in the raised bed instead of reaching in from the side. It's a raised bed, you don't uh, step on it in the road. And you give me a message during the week. Uh, Mick, as you see, you do a lot of talks. I'm starting to do some. If you ever need me, let me know. Cheers. I do, Callum. Good to know. Talk title, cost two, and that's uh, when, you, when we have our meetings. But uh, he's up Scotland, so he's going to cost a bomb anyway. Right, fence top panels, if we can just make them out there. Because I'll up these lot, but I ain't done them at the side of the tunnel. So when the weather gets better, and these have dried out completely, I've got to get in there to do them. Uh, but it's dry enough to do the walls. If you remember, these bricks got bloody holes in them. So I'll fill them or fill in now with cement. So I can wallop them. 
And that's that last lot done there. Now I've come down this end, so that's this bed done. That bed. Now we're going to start on this one. So basically, this was like that. So I've just pointed that up roughly. Once that dries out, then I'll, I'll do the rest of it and all. Nick, this off the internet during the week. Hey, sweetie, I'm at work, dinner is in, up in, on the stove. You only have to light it. The gas is already turned on. Love you. Oh, <laughs> Boston. Look at that, Paul. Talk of the devil. If you get any catalogues, like Argyle, I've had a, well, they've all we'll started coming out now. I've had about three with this week off. For um, bedding plans, summer bedding as well. But any catalogue, if, if I've got enough stuff, I still look, like for this instance, if there's anything new coming out, which there always is. Because that is a new one. Because it's very late ripening. I mean, all the black currants. I, I had Ben Cohen, which is a corker, on the plot, and and that's all I needed, just the one. But I had no fruit to exhibit. I just ate uh, the fruit itself and to make wine. But this one uh, ripens from early August, so I'm just hoping I can keep him going all through August. So I'll keep some for our show. If I call, then I shall still make jam and the wine with it. But, uh, that was one I spotted. And the other one was a uh, cherry. And uh, I do a corn as well. And this is Sweetheart. And uh, this is a late one as well. Uh, very late in September. Picking up until September, late September. Perfect. One thing I always look for as well, surf, uh, self fertile. Perfect. And uh, the price of these, the 85 quid, 65 quid, all benefit. Right, got a talk this Tuesday. This is a uh, Burbage Hinkley. It's uh, just above Coventry. We talk bloody hell life for beginners because I'm a beginner myself. But that one, uh, anybody's interested, 7 pm start. Uh, free entry. If you have, just message me, I'll give you the details. That is for Burbage Garden Club. And then in the post, these do come. The citrus feed. And it was a um, little scoop inside, one scoop to half a litre uh, rainwater. And that's weekly. It's got weekly March to September. And then on the, on the other side of it, it has got weekly feed all through the year. So, the little chap that I put it on. Right, I need some uh, pots. Luckily, these have emptied out. So, I don't know where tree come. Which will please, Paul. Bit of milk. You got more trees and some fish here. I oh, know. These are a, a small, late. Juicy fruit. Right, you can either get a bare root or rooted. Obviously, this is bare root because it's easy for them to post out and it's cheaper because the, there's no weight of the, the compost or the pot. But a nice, healthy, strong plant. Normal thing. Get one of my tubs up. Cover the owl up with a, a bigger pebble or whatever I can get. Then I put a bit of drainage. So that's my rabbit muck. 
Then I'm going to put some milk on top of him. Bit of mitochondria, Harris. Older things like Mike. I'll cover that one again later on. Right, I want him to the, the depth I want him. I hold him up to just guess how much stuff I want on him there underneath him. This is what the plant come in and these bits, God knows what they were. If it's cardboard, it was thick cardboard. An alternative to peat, I suppose. Put uh, me own compost, that's going in as well. Just picking the carpets off, scraping away the top because that's the worms are still yomping that. I don't want the broken down stuff, which I'm going to get out. We just have a perv close up of the worms. If you've got a good eyesight, you see the pot worms as well, more than the one I'd like in there. I mean, they, they are good, but not too many of them. So we'll, we'll sort them out in a bit. There is an easy way to control it. But uh, that's a good brew. So I'm doing a mix. This is the old um, compost. Which I used to have me, me gladi corn that's in from last year. And when I was getting the um, soil away from the wall, when I was um, bricking that up, that was a mixture of that lot as well. So there's broken down wood chip in there and leaf mold and everything. So I'm using that as well. Mixing that all together. And he will go under him with my compost. Right, to sort them pot worms out, that's what I'm putting on. This is um, wood burner ash. Hey. Well, I, I don't hate it, but because I don't know, it sorts them out straight away. Get rid of them. As you can see, I'll put a sprinkling all over there, and then just wait for it in. Right, I've done my tree. Get him, obviously, the level where he was before, originally. But I've pushed this down with my hands and held him where he is. Was that I don't want that dropping down later on. Get him nice and upright, looking from the front and from the side. And because we got frost again, we've had another good one last night. And, and there's a worse one again tonight. So I'm bunging him in the, the greenhouse. But he's got to have a, a fur coat on him. So I need a bit more muck out the tunnel, one of my bags. And I've top dressed him. This will help him a bit more. Because he's a fruit tree and he's um, had a bit of disturbance, I'm not going to have a chicken growth, which has been in the post and everything as well. So Epsom salts. Read this a few months ago. Just gives him a, a pick-me-up. So he'll get a water with that as well. Obviously, I'll put warm water in there, warm rainwater, just to um, dilute that. So he's not cold water, he's uh, just off cold, if that makes sense, tepid. Is that the word? Well, he has a good soaking. I'll put a cane under him there to level him up. So you've got the drainage anyway. I see it looks a bit more level there. That runs off well. This is a faulty um of our front drive. Looking next door. This is next door's bit here. Till uh, with our frost with the minus sevens and eights we've had. Some of the pots now that started cracking. So you can see that one there. It's a bit blurred, but that's a nice solid pot. It'll take summer to crack that one. There's a better photo. But uh I think he's, he's been that by now. He knows he's taking the last. With a hound, whether it's a pigeon or seagull mug, I still like to have a sniff. 
or I just shout at and tell you to piddle on it and it does it automatically now. There's a good egg. Mick? Oh, yes? You want to be careful with her eating stuff like that now because foxes round here are getting bird flu. Oh, I read down the paper or... It's the mammals are getting it, you, you know. Yeah. Now, right. as, as soon as we go anywhere near it, it stays off now. And the piddles on it. That's just a perv up the side. And there's just a bit of space down here for you to lies. This is going to stay clear because it's a step going up. Well, uh, there ain't much room left then anyway now. Right, Cathy, our second inputter. Can you there, Cathy? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Boston, yeah. Got you. All okay. you boys. Yeah, thank you, Mick. Uh, this was an event um, I took my son to on Saturday. It was um, an event called Potato Fest. I don't know when, whether anybody else went or been before. Um, at um, Wattlesborough Village Hall. And... Uh, put on by Shropshire Organic Gardeners and I've never seen so many spuds in my whole life <laughs> and uh, I don't think my son had seen so many either. Um, it was absolutely packed out, we got there and there were no parking spaces. Um, it opened at 10 o'clock and we got there at 11 and there were lots of varieties that were already sold out so um, I think uh, in hindsight you know we should have gone a bit earlier but uh, but there you go. Um, that was a display, um, just all the different Great. types of potatoes, yeah. And then next one, Mick. Was this near Shrewsbury? Yeah, near Shrewsbury, just on the outskirts of Shrewsbury, yeah, just um, on the Welsh Pool Road. Yeah. Uh, yeah, next one, Mick. Yeah, more spuds. And next one. Yeah, so I've got my little helper. Uh, there were that many varieties there, and... Um, the, we didn't really know what we were looking for, so the the lady said to Oscar, "What sort of things do you like?" And he said, "Well, I want something a bit different." So he chose um, a bim, which gives you purple mash and pink lily. Um, the lady said would come out like a a pink mash. So uh, I think he's hoping to surprise Nanny and Granddad with a Sunday lunch um, when they're grown that uh, he'll have some different coloured mash later on. <laughs> um, there were 13 varieties of organic tubers there and they'd got 27 varieties of non-organic tubers so there was plenty of choice. Um, as a bit of a beginner they gave you a sheet as you walked in with all the varieties on. Um, they'd either got them in variety order on one side and then they'd got them in category order on the other side which for beginners like us was really good to see that you could either choose the first early, second earlies early main crop or your main crop so it was all really well mm. set out really good, good. organization there um next one please mick yeah they've got um uh, another stall where you could buy um they've got uh gladioli bulbs they've got some um what else i think um if you move on to the next one mick i've bought some um Oh, those are the lily rose. I think they're all a bit out of order. Those are the, the pink pink mash ones. Next one, please, Mick. And those are the bim. Those are going to be purple mash. Yeah, you can see what colour they are on the inside. And uh, next one, Mick. That's it. I wanted some raspberry canes as well. So those are going to be hopefully early, early raspberries. Um, again, the, the guy had started selling out of those as well. So... I think you know back by about an hour in. I think they'd had a good, um, you know, they'd had a good turnover by then. The next one, please, Mick. Yeah, there was lots for little ones there as well. Um, my little one was quite taken with these. The uh, the guy from the Wildlife Trust was um, uh, going through all the different skulls. There was badger skulls. He got um, a frog skeleton. Um, roe deer, dog skull, all sorts of skulls there. So, um, you know, there were plenty for, for, you know, kids to be interested in as well. Next one, please, Mick. I'd love that, wouldn't they? Yeah, it was. It was really good. Yeah, and then they got a microscope. So, again, Oscar was really taken with that. He was um, fiddling around. Um, yeah, they'd got like a little um, stick there. You could poke around in the earth and, um, and get the microscope and 
poke around and see what microorganisms you could see in the soil as well. And then they'd got people to talk to about, about composting and uh, wormeries. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, yeah, really good. There was lots of sort of stalls there as well. So, you know, it was a good day out and you could have a cup of tea and a bacon bap as well. So, um, so yeah, really good event. Perfect. Yeah. I That's think. a brilliant little tool, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Well, if they got them in schools, it'd be great for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> they got them in the science, science labs nowadays, don't they? Yeah. Well, I love that. Thanks, mate. Lovely. Cheers, Kath. Thank you. Anybody got any questions on... Um... Yes, Kath. I've got to say, things yeah. like that that inspire the kids, isn't it, Kath? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, I took... They're really enthusiastic. Yeah, I took my little one in and he was he was a bit taken aback because it was quite busy um, and Oscar's autistic. So um, he doesn't cope well in sort of, you know, busy situations. But um, but everyone there was really friendly. And the lady, you know, that was talking through the, um, you know, the pink mash and the purple mash really took to him. And he soon sort of came into his own and he was writing the bags for me. And then and then the other stalls as well with the uh, the skulls and the uh, microscope it you know it really caught his attention so um, yeah mm -hmm. it was really you know i didn't went in didn't think that there was going to be that much for him but um we got in and it was really good was the spud expensive say again spuds expensive or what was the problem well, they they were charging 20 pence a tuber but if you joined the um Shropshire organic garden it's i think it was 12 pound for uh, for a year um you got them half price so they, good, yeah, and then they put on some talks and bits and pieces as well throughout the year. So, um, so yeah, I, I joined up just because I was going to the event, but um, didn't realise quite what was, um, you know, what was going on there. So yeah, it was really good. Yeah, very good right. event. Real purple, purple mash sounds a bit weird. I know. Yeah, I'll show you when uh, when we've got it all grown <laughs> and mashed up. Really? Oh, but if they ate it or not? <laughs> purple, purple roasties. <laughs> Lovely, cheers, Kath. Thank you. Excellent. Right, top of the garden again. Uh, this lot where I've filled it and drawn out. Uh, slowly getting there, as you can see. So that was this side. Now done the back, and I'm working way down this side. That one's been walloped, what we had earlier on, and this is the last one to be done as well. But uh, at the time it was a bit cloudy and took me time. Right, Ashwood Nurseries. This was um, probably a week ago. Probably been a uh, good timing because I got the Gladys in. I went down to um, spend one of my tokens I got with them to see if they need any more books to flog my compost books but luckily they got the gladys out the first time ever which i've seen there they've got canners first time i'd ever seen them flogged like that in a bag and uh, this old chap who was over here he bought one and just put it down here just to stop him because he was still looking buying other stuff I thought, Gordon Bennett, can I? have got other nose in that after. Anyway, glad he's fussed. So these are the ones I got out. Which, uh, yellow, the Vinta, white, Bangladesh, earlier than before. And then that yellow one there. Lemon, shallow. To the next one. Purple. Fill the tyres, the red and the, the red in there, the altar, and the pink and see more rosa. So I had my uh, money's worth out of their pot, and I bought these two canners. Tailors, I've heard of them, but never even uh, looked them up or anything before. Uh, that one I picked, as you, you should know by now, I like my variegated leaves and the leaf on that one looked uh, a good one. Similar to one I've already. 
Uh, so that was six quid, the other one was four quid. So you know, anyway. That had got a nice dark, plain shiny leaf as well. Just something different. So I'm getting me um, corms, me gladi corms back home. Uh, just to make use of all of the crate, the mushroom crate, and just partition them off. I'm still not touching each other, I've still got air moving between them. Don't forget these are in the garage. And I'm in there regular during the day. So they will have air movement. But I'm just spacing them out. And we've done there. Right, getting on these two. I thought, let's have a look at the chaps. Because if they're in a battery, now they've got a perforated holes at the back. But still, I'm going to have a look at them. I don't want them sweating and nothing in there. So I put that um, rhizome that I've called. Obviously that's the old plant where that chopped off. This is a rhizome underneath. But I thought I'll put it on, um, I'm on a, a few can of goods. And I'll just put them on there. Looks healthy. And uh, straight away. Oh, that, that was your other one. I got him out as well. It was dryish. This um, looked like must be. It made from Canada. It was a can of man. Sorry to the bearer of bad news. These packed rhizomes contain bad surprises 99% of the time. These canners are grown in fields in Holland and all their crops are infected. This problem has been going on for years. Uh, I'm glad you told me. I didn't really want to hear that, but glad you did. And then I started looking into it, looking for people um, in the UK which sold them, i.e., nurseries that did their own and not important. Tailors important from Holland. So I've got in, I found a bloke, uh, can the UK, I'll, I'll put it on later on anyway, but I'm in touch with him now and he also put this on. I was like, right, come here, uh, uh, for this reason, dry tubers originate in Holland, even with plant passports are often infected when you purchase them. None of the Dutch way, uh, wholesalers will certify that their rhizomes virus free only offering to replace plants that fail so our mate in Canada was right Canada's are indeed uh, and indeed daily is the best board from UK specialist growers who will guarantee that their plants are virus free so then I started looking into it even more for trying to find um, UK growers yes Paul got your hand up mate yeah, all I was going to say to that, Mick, because, uh, you know, when I had them tubers off Farmer Gracie, yeah. the daily, they sent me four lots before I actually got some that actually grew really good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they got um, some sort of disease or virus in them. Yeah. Well, you mentioned them. I got in touch with them because um, you can message them on the, on the website. If That's it, right, yeah. They're quite helpful. They are helpful. They are, are. But all yeah. I wanted to know off her, because I Googled them, and they are in Holland. Yeah. Just, which, straight away, I thought, well, that, that's good. So I thought, <laughs> no, I better find out first. So I messaged them, and I, I says, do you import your stuff, or do you do your own? And it says, no, we import it. Because yeah. I mentioned them, um, I mean, the other stuff they might do their own. I know they got it, it's a big place. But it, my question was for canners. And they right. said, says, no, we import them off somebody else. It's still in Holland. Yeah. And and I mentioned this about being infected. And it says, well, I, I, I didn't admit it, but it says, anything you have off us, if you're not happy with it, we'll replace it. Well, that's that's what they did with me. Four yeah. times though. Four, four <laughs> yeah, times. That's right. So that yeah. tells me 
that, uh, that they know that I'm getting back stuff. Yeah. But to get round it, we'll replace it. Well, yeah. Mate in Canada, he says, if they come back and say that, you just say, no, I want my money back. Because mm -hmm. if I replace it, you're getting the same crap. Yeah, they did offer me the money back, but I said, no, send me some more, so. Yeah. But Taylor's, I got in touch with them. I sent them the photos and the write-ups. And uh, basically, they didn't want to know. They said we, we've, um, well, they wouldn't admit it, same as anything else. So I asked my mate in uh, Canada, and he says, for canner sellers in UK, you can ask Mark. I'm saying he sells clean canners. He has a, a small nursery. So I'm getting in touch with him, i.e. where he is, um, website and all this rubbish. So I should have them on by the next Zoom. And the other one, he's got his David Freer, also has a large collection, and he sells some in summer. Which is good to know. Which means we can get decent stock in the UK. I start my rhizomes off inside. Pots are all over the kitchen in late April. What a mess. That's like Paul done with the bloody bananas. The soil in the greenhouse is usually warm enough to plant directly in mid-May. So that is similar to us. Uh, can of ceilings need heat? At least 20 C, 70. Otherwise they may rot. Rhizomes, uh, minimum 15C, that's at night. If you start them in a, uh, a pot, 20C, they grow very quickly. Seeds can be started as early as January, so that they flower the same year. Rhizomes are starting heat at the end of the month. I will never start tubers in a cold house because they are liable to rot. But once they start growing, you can move them into the cold greenhouse in April. So I mentioned to him as well, because I, I was on the websites, the kind of websites, there's quite a few put the seeds on. And I mentioned to him, if, if you obviously get the seed, are they easy enough to grow and Will they be virus free and all this? And he said, if the, if the plant goes, he takes loads of seeds and he sends his all over the world, which I've now found out. And he says, if, as long as the plants are virus free, your seed will be virus free as well. And that's why the seeds sell better than the plants. Because planting early, planting a seed early, you will get a flower on that plant the first year. I'm doing mine tomorrow, Mick. Oh, yeah, good man. Buy some seeds off my canners. I'm drawing out now, but I'm gonna. Oh, good man. I see a few videos on YouTube how to do them properly. So yeah. I'm gonna go back at it anyway. So, this is what I saw when it got me brain good. Because you put this in here, each each sends some out to our mate, Roger in Belgium, wherever he is. And there's his little packs, what he sends out. He's got a little catalogue or whatever. I thought Gordon Bennett, I wonder if it sends to the UK because with the uh, us Brexit, well, it, it's only the EU crapping on us with the UK passports and all this. As Jeffrey mentioned before, cost a bloody bomb now. So I'm, I asked um, our mate uh, if it sent to the UK. So I've, I've just sent some last week. So I said, uh, it's a rough price. And the uh, which was reasonable. So then I asked him, what have you got? But because where he is, top of Canada, he, he put this on, they, they got a polar blast. Bloody polar blast, we don't do many of them. Just a bit of frost, neck or something. But he, he says, um, when you pick out, I only ever go to the post office, say once every two weeks. This is for obviously to, to, to post stuff because the weather is that crap he, he stays here for two weeks and this i i, 
fired off the, um, the weather forecast two days ago. Look at that minus 78 wind chill. Shit. Good. God. That's weird trousers here. That'd have been your banana. And we uh, complain about our weather. Right, this is the basically his catalog. And that's what they come out at. That's what I've asked for. And that's what he sent me. And this was, he posted this um, four days ago. So when I get them, uh, 50 pence of seed, virus free seed, that's the main thing. Started early, you'll give you flowers this year. So if you start them late, you can still grow them. But uh, wait for a good flower next year. So if anybody is interested, that's the first one I picked. So the mall is stock, Sylvain. So if you're interested, it's fireworks. Just write it down. And that one is a zebra, Picasso. I've seen that one before. Mm, it's pretty sim similar. Leopard girl, open pollinated. Happy fireworks. He's like a pink and yellow flower. Zebra seedling. He's more red than yellow. Uh, Poseidon. Cedar. Dwarf pink. I've had them for the um, raised beds. I mean, big raised bed. The dwarf. Yellow zebra seedling. So that's a new, a new one for him. It's a seedling. But he's got the red speckles in the yellow. And the, when I've looked at quite a few, obviously the, the seeds are black. What they have a few doing now, I'm just filing the skin off. So as soon as you see that white, then that's it, you leave it. Like he's done with them. And when you, when you do plant them, that's where he starts from. But uh, we'll cover that later on. But if anybody's interested in any of them, if you want the photos again, I'll just email me and I'll send you them. But uh, we, yes, Paul. All it is, you know, you raise beds there. Uh huh. We thought about tyrolene in it. What's Do you know that? what that is? Pray tell. It, it's it's like rough cast, but it's done from a gun, and it will like seal all that off. Um, it's done now, Rag. Because I've got I've got the gun. If you wanted it, you know what I mean. You can get a bag of tyrolene for about eighteen quid, I think. Mm, and it would probably do the lot. You know what I mean. It gives it like a rough cast finish. Oh, uh, I've done it now, Rag. Well, just a thought if you wanted to, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll get you through. But um, it would have probably done all... You could still paint it after, not a problem. Yeah. But it just puts, a, a, like, a seal coat on it. Oh. Where to proof? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know when you see the rough cast on the houses? Yeah. It's, it's like a very fine, uh. very fine coating, like a rough cast, but... Um, Oh. You can paint it after or whatever, but it does actually come coloured as well. Yeah. So you can choose probably about four or five colours, which are basically all either cream or white. You know what I mean? But uh, oh. but you can you can paint over the top of it after. But yeah. You can just seal it all off, seal it off like so. Uh, oh, nice. But anyhow, I've got it if you need it. Okay, Rag. All right. One thing I missed out with the canners. When he starts off his rhizomes, obviously you put them in a, a nice big pot because they're going to have a, a good root structure on them. But he puts muck right on the bottom as well. Then you go in medium in between and you on that on the top. And he says when the roots hit that muck, they love it. But uh, that's what he uses on, under this. Right, slowly painting. This has a primer on it, 
white primer and then it will lick out the masonry paint and that's the masonry paint as well which is this one here which I had mixed up from B&Q because so I was trying to get the colour close to what my wood is and uh, they did a good job actually so that's another one done there that one walloped there good thing about well we did have a bit of um, rain yesterday morning but I've finished but on, on, on until then it's been dry and that that lot is done now there's a fruit tree there I've managed to wedge up the corner I'm still getting these two beds with that one there it's in the lot that's the last bit I've got to do here then I had a, a delivery not more deliveries yes I'm sorry cock I'm calling again Colin uh good back on no Jake Parker's is it um I think I'm near Manchester somewhere these get all their stuff from abroad as well but uh, I'm all right these because I'm glad he's and corms you haven't see with them duffing us because you know glad he's gonna come if he's nice and clean running out of uh, trays so I to go and leg it down with a hound there's my gather in there look make sure you can still see me and just legged it in there got some of these out perfect took them back home spaced them out again it's a prince of orange the other one was circus club most of the catalogs bring a new and out every year for a as I come out the photos. So I'm stacking up again. I got rid of a few um, last year. Because I, I don't do any uh, shots anymore. Obviously I'm doing more gladdies. Top of the garden again. That's a bit of cement around here. Which I'll wall up that one as you can see. Right, my little chap there, Kate Gooseberry. Um, I did have environments around him, took that off. I mean, obviously, that minus seven, minus eight. He ain't gonna bloody survive. But I've got a better one to replace him for this year. But I've left him in there. Because I, I just want to see if he does survive. I mean, there is a chance he will survive. Because he's got a good root structure on him. And he's got mulch over him. And with that environment that was on, covering it when we had the good minuses. You'll never know. One thing that yeah. did survive. Yes? Sorry, you'll probably find that it self seeds itself. Because no, they, um, I've got a better they... one for this year. But they do self seed because I had one, I thought it completely died, and then all of a sudden it appeared again. Yeah, in the seeds. Oh, poor me that uh, last year, four days. Yeah, but I, I've got um, a uh, updated one, so it's good. Mm. Yeah, but I just want to see if he does survive. But yeah, one thing that it. didn't, uh, Scott, sorry, mate, lost all my uh, daily tubers. So they went in the bin. That's a shame. I oh, know. It's been unseasonably cold, though, isn't it? I think I might have lost some as well. It's, it's my own fault. I had, no, I had no heat on it, greenhouse, over winter. <clears throat> Even I should have just had it on low. Yeah, that first oh. really cold snap that caught me on the hot. Yeah. My, I don't know if I'm eating my banana yeah. or survive, or, you know in the greenhouse now but <clears throat> i don't know if i got me in time so yeah. we'll see i think he's caught a few out this year yeah paul you got your hand up or is that an old and no no i'm just gonna say i've left all mine in the ground this year mick so i'll keep you posted oh uh, i've just left them there we'll see what happens know. yeah because i talk to you know alan that normally comes to the meetings yeah 
and he reckons he leaves his in every year and so does another guy on our allotment. Oh. He, he does nothing other than covers him in grass cuttings. Yeah. And he has a fantastic, oh, fantastic good. turnout every year. So I've just good. left him in the ground. We've always took him up before. That's but right. This year we haven't, we haven't. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. Oh, good man. Did you see Jason's post? Smith. Yeah. Lost all his dailies completely. You see, they were working in his greenhouse. They were knackered. Some of his posts on Facebook. Good deal. Lost loads, yes. Hmm. Right, me and the hound. You and the paper run. Beautiful sky. I saw this one during the week. Look at that. To me, What's that the? is a corker. That's I love my variegated leaf. Look at the variegation in that as well. That's cross between Cleopatra and Durban. How the hell they got that across? This is. We've got the black leaf Durban got, and the striped leaf is there. Yeah. This is a bloke in the Philippines. He's crossed that to me. That's beautiful. Love it. Over, man. When you come in. <laughs> I could ask him to the show, can I? Yeah, so we got him in the show. Just bum one in. Yeah. Um, I, the last um, Zoom I did, I put a stint on when me, Alf and Colin, BBC guy as well, on the National Vet Society Midlands branch stand. And these lot come and paid me a visit. A garden clickers. Garden clickers started off, oh, that is maybe 20 years ago. Might be longer. From a group down South Wales. Um, oh, most of them was down Wales and now South Wales. And we used to meet up there. And I did a talk, that was at Cardiff Spring Show. We met up there and I did a talk. And these lot come. And they had a trip out again, as you can see. It. BBC guys were worldwide, most of them are youngs. But that cropped up because they've, they've now got a group on Facebook and I've joined that. So it's good to see them lot again. And they put this photo in on, which I've never seen in front of Right, damage in the greenhouse. That's one of Aaron's sons, but um, I'm hoping I lost him. I started um, being a bit of. Wait an hour three. He looks a bit um, up and under. Not very well. There's a few here. Aaron's bought us. He, he's left them outside as well all the winter. Then with them two things, uh, what you had as well, Scott. One threw a flower of mine. Do you still see? With the bloody uh, The tuberosa. Yeah. Polyanthus tuberosa. But the frost has jobbed everything out, you see. So I'm just going to... Now he's lasting. So there's my old um, Ostrom area. Obviously that one there, and this is the long end of the greenhouse. There's the old growth, which I've left in, so I don't need to with it. But the new shoots are coming out now. So they are pretty hardy. Good job. So the old gum I've just cut off all the old crap, hoping they'll come through. Then was two uh, chilies. I don't know if I, they'll take a the now, and I'll be them. But we'll see how he goes. You see, he's showing growth signs. So uh, we'll see what he goes. Right, rasps. Autumn fruiting. It's usually early Feb when I cut them down. Uh, complete high ground level. So, dry day, so that's what we'll do. And it, as if I zoom in there, you know, we've seen the new growth anyway. So that the buds Would you? are coming on it. Mean, so that just tell, tells you the, the climate change, even it's getting earlier now with these. So next year, mid Jan, I shall cut them back next year. Because there's loads of grub going into these bugs. 
and I don't really want to do it because I'm going to cut him off. So next year it'll be mid January. So the canes are going to come out and I'll cut all the crap off and it'll go in the bin. In the bin, mint canella. And then the sun come out, so straight up the greenhouse, open all the windows, so all that ventilation. I mean, the door was always left open anyway. Back down to me babbies, get all the canes out. I take them into the tunnel to dry out, as you can see. Sun comes up here, and it's this side of the house, meaning I've got shade up until the sun gets a bit higher. But we've got sun at the back. And that's where the canes are going in the tunnel. So I've got good ventilation all the way around and this door is netted. So anything in there, like canes, just open them out. And then in the day they're nice and dry. So then they'll be put back on top of there. So secateurs, straight down to soil level and chop him off. Right, if you've got a good eyesight, there's two new shoots coming up here as well. So that once again tells me I'm going to take these off early next year. If you've got even a better eyesight, there's a little chap there. Let's have a look at him as well. Allium leaf minor, exactly the same, it might not be. But it's the same little chrysalis what the allium leaf minor comes in. I spotted him as well, so he got squashed. Yeah, there's got other shoots coming up. But all I want is one, two, three, four, five. I think there's only five in there, that's all I want. Any extras, I shall clear them off. I mean, you can have that packed out and get loads on, or I want larger. If, if, if there's only five plants in there, I will have larger in there, better tasting fruit. Plus, I've got a better air circulation around the plants. So I've grey mould, my tortoise, anything like that. I've got no chance. So I've got air movement. Uh, this is dropped, same as all my raised beds, tubs, whatever it is. So I'm going to fill up with an osmuk. Also, I'm checking my straws. Now, don't forget we've had minus sevens, eights, and these have survived, meaning I've done what they said on the tin. Flamingo. Bought these, uh, probably ordered them two years ago. My first fruit last year, as you can see, I've just started coming through. If we get a dry spell and this dries out completely, then also be able to drop away to just look after it. So, all I'm doing here is cutting off the old crap, meaning the dead leaves. I know it then on. If there's any disease about aphids that sense um, a, a dying leaf plant or whatever, and they leg it for that. So, we cut all the crap off. I'll go somewhere else. Just looking after the chap. There he is, all done. Let's look, trying to get a bird's eye view looking down from his six half baskets. So this lot has been mucked. And uh, what I should have done was cover that straight away. Because the hand legged it in there, nick some out. This is through a fit. Dennis, hi Mick. Our third inputter. All yours, Dennis. Yeah, that's um, the bed in the uh, my twenty foot greenhouse. I um, I grew leeks in there for a couple of years. And I didn't, I couldn't put them down onto the soil because I couldn't kneel down to do the collar. So I, I had drums and I raised them up in um, fifty liter drums. And I've checked all them out now, and, and um, I had to raise, I had to put a new raised bed in, which you see the timbers on the side. 
Yeah. Uh, meat of mine has got a he's got a bit of a timber yard and he's packing up this year and I had out, I had them off him pretty cheap. Um, so I made the the six inch by by two inch. And they all treated, so they, they, they should last quite a while. I did have a couple of scaffolding planks, but I didn't do the same as you do. I didn't cover them with plastic, and they they, they rotted off in me, so yeah, overdue to do it. So I've got done now. I'm going to grow um, tomatoes directly into the soil this year um, and use the, the couple of grow bags that I did get for uh, my cucumbers. So there you are. It's a, it's a good input that is. Oh, good. Um, this this is the leeks I grew in those those fifty gallon drums. Um, I had a lot of problem with it, with these last year because I had suckers on every one. I couldn't show any. Um, and I've spoken to quite a few people, John Sorsby and um, Dave Metcalf, and they reckon it's that terrible heat we had in the August that set them off. Yeah. Um. So I spoke to um, Ivor Mace about it, and he said to to put, put the the pips in later. Well, I've got a couple, but they're very, very far behind at the moment, and I don't know whether they even, even come any good. But they're also pips off these leaks, uh, or just cut leak that had that did have suckers. So I don't know whether they'll be any good. So I'll just use them for eating if they if they don't come right. Yeah. So I didn't send you that slide this time, not Mick, did I? Sorry? I didn't send you that slide this this time, did I? I can't remember, right? I can't remember if you, if I, if I, I don't think I sent you that one, actually. I think it was from the time before. Oh, they, they're the ones I've sent. Um, these are, um, I've only got about a, oh, 14 or so, I think. Um, they, they're from Pips. And I've never, I've never, I've never had Pips on, on the, Onion heads before till this year, they didn't know how to actually do it. Uh -huh. and apparently, when the seed when the seed goes to flower, you actually you cut it off and leave it a little tuft on top, uh, which Mark Greener told me what to do. But you only got a couple. These show onions, Dennis. Pardon? Show yeah, onions. well, they, they they are the big onions. Yeah, they, yeah. That's, they they're that they're about two foot tall now. They are, and they're in two liter pots. Um. So I'm hoping to I'm I I got to try and get three onions out of that because it's, what happened when I when I took the um the pips the pips were fine but the seed I don't know whether a lot of it um didn't get pollinated properly in the greenhouse because it was so hot yeah and you weren't getting the bees in the greenhouse so so, so the pollination wasn't taking place I don't think um so I had a lot of bad uh, luck with that now on the left hand side you see in the small pots. They were they were very very small um, pips, so I just chucked a few in there to see if they'd come. I got oh. a few a few from seed, but uh, it's, they they're not great. So um, I'm hoping I'm hoping on on these for a for a set of three onions if I can get them. Oh. Um, now if I was going to grow for the big onions, if I was going to go for the, the heavyweights, if I mean, I'd have been putting these in. I think I think the the magic date is the seventeenth of October. Yeah. The date you actually saw or, or do the pips. Now, I don't know if anybody saw the the um, the Zoom video by Dave Metcalf. No. The NVS. Anybody look at it? No. No. Oh, well. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh uh, yeah. Well, what I was what I was worried about uh, because I I didn't I don't know about the pips because I've never had until this year really. I I had some sent to me by Mark Rayner, but but I never actually had them on my own my own plants. And what I didn't realize is you, with a seed, if it, once it, once the, the pods open and you can see the black showing, you've got to take them then because if you don't, they'll all go on the floor and you lose them all anyway. Uh -huh. but with the pips, he said you can leave the pips on as long as the plant is, is okay and sound. You can leave the pips on for quite a long time after. Yeah. And they don't, they don't get damaged. So that'll be looking, I'd be looking at something for that for next year actually. Because I have got a, quite a few onions down for seed. Um, That's good to know. The, the the plants looking after the pips in it. You, the plants looking after the pips for you. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna take them off and start them off. Yeah. Oh. Um, I have stored them as well in the green in the in the fridge. Yeah. 
in um in a you know coffee jar. And I did that for quite a while, and they they all from them late. No, I, I did, my intention was to was to try and keep them. I didn't put these in, basically because of the the cost of electricity and whatever. I was a bit. Yeah. We'd all worried about it, really. We we we, we say we're not, but we are. Um. So I I I didn't put these until quite late, but they've gone away nicely. They are. So I I was quite pleased with it. Oh, good. Um. But I would have liked. I mean, I I used to put about a hundred onions out. Well, I don't even know if I'll get a set from three, if a, a set of three from these, but I just have to be very careful when they grow in to say, right, say it's like 21 or something, and then lift yeah. it, and then hopefully the others will come up to match it and, and then do it that way. Oh. You know? Yeah. Right, these are, um, I've, I've started growing shallots back again. About two years ago, I, I had some off uh, uh, Mike Bradley, oh. and and then um, obviously last year I I, um, I obviously increased the amount and I was able to put out quite a few. Well, this year is a, is a, is a next year on again now. This what you're seeing now. So these are this year. I probably got about a hundred, I suppose, in five-inch pots. And the one, in, the ones in the in the big tray at the back, they're all the um, um, the smaller ones, um, picklers. Uh, yeah. But I've only picked them out. I've only picked them small out of out of what the harvest was, so that I can keep them, hopefully, keep them down in size for the for the picking class. Um, Are these the eighteenth uh, denoid exhibition? They, they they're supposed to be. He, he calls them aristocrat. Oh. Uh. I don't know if there's any difference, but I, I used to grow Hattie oh, for about 15 years and, and I lost them all for that through that virus. I did, say I say I grew I put a hundred out and I'd have I'd have say four hundred back. Yeah. Right? By come September, October, November, I'd have two hundred I'd have two hundred of them gone. They just rotted away. Uh -huh. it, there was a hell of a virus in them and I, I just I just stopped growing them in because it was just heartbreaking, really, because you, you, you couldn't yeah. guarantee. Although I had, I had some good sets out of them, you couldn't guarantee that you would even have enough. Oh. And you couldn't give them to anybody because you give them away and you say, oh, that lot you gave me, they all rotted. Yeah. So, so it's, it was just, I just got, and I saw these and I bought them. I bought these off him and, um, you know, they seem all right. But if you can see the white stuff on top, that's sulfur I put over it. It's supposed to be to stop any botrytis. Yeah. Um, but I have got a little bit of um, problem with the tips on some of them. But it's like as if they've... Because obviously they're, they're not in heat or anything. They're, they're in the cold greenhouse. So I just cover with fleece. Yeah. And it's like as if they like burnt a little bit on top. Mm. So not on these. You can't see them on here. No, but I, I, what, I, what I did, I cut all, I cut all of them done right but i've i've cut all the bad stuff off now and just let them go and if if they come good they come good and if they don't i'll check them you know yeah. basically that's all they can do oh um, they should be um yeah that's when i put them out in the greenhouse you can see the there's quite a few there like um that would have been about the well about say eight tenths of November. It's a little bit earlier. I would have liked to have held them back a little bit more. But one or two of them started shooting and I and I don't like planting them when they shoot in. Yeah. I dry, I want it I I want it to actually shoot after it's got a root rather than shoot in because it's might when the conditions might have been damp as well, which causes a lot of it. Yeah. I suppose um next year I got I'd probably put a dehumidifier in the in the shed. And, and try and keep it that way. Oh. Uh, if electricity comes down a bit, then I can afford it. <laughs> That's it. If someone shoots, it's telling you, plant me out, isn't it? Yeah. You know. There's something wrong, isn't it? Yeah. They think he's going to die, so he's, he's got to... Yeah. He's trying to survive, isn't it? shoot to survive. Yeah. Yeah. I did. What I did try to do, not not this time now, but I'm going back about eight years ago, ten years ago, I, I got a couple of them to go to seed. And I thought, right, I'll, well, I'll take the seed, and I, and I know now if I sow the seed, at least I got a, I got a, a virus-free bulb. Yeah. 
but I couldn't keep I couldn't keep the head from yellowing off and dying off. Uh, I just couldn't keep him. So I never actually got it out to fruition like. Mm. But there we are. Um, these are the slot. I showed these last year. Um, they, they, they weren't, they're not a big set. They, they yeah. they're probably around about, about 38 mil around. Um, or 38 mil diameter would be here, 38 mil diameter. Um, but with this set, I actually weighed every single one and it was only one gram between all nine. Oh. Uh. And, and, and I, and I got... The depths were right, and the shapes were all the same. They pro probably to get the uniform. The uniform he was was spot on with them. But obviously they're a small set. They're not. They're not a big set. Yeah. Now I had I had um, shallots here, which were like forty five, which would have been a better set. But I couldn't get nine. I could only like I'd get seven, and the next set or. or the next big set then I could only get six so I just I put that in I put two in actually I, I had a first and a third with them uh, and it was I think it was five in the class as well so that, that would, I was quite pleased with that nice the uniform it was probably the uniformity got it got me the the win rather than the it's size like the, the size yeah. was a bit small yeah but, um, you know that's the way it is isn't it that's it Conditions for Swan Eight, then you. Yeah, that's right. They, they were they yeah. were in pecker. They were pecker condition, and oh. uniformity was right. And and the weight, the weight, the, every single one of them was in gram, like which is difficult, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but I, but that's the way I that's the way I set them up. Oh. I do the same with tomatoes when I do the tomatoes. I try to get the tomatoes all the same gram weight. Yeah. So they look better, but um, I just showed the tomatoes all wrong. They should I come no way. It was my fault. Um, now these are these are um, these all these were from seed. The, I think there's one, two, three. There's six fairly big ones, and the back, the small one, is actually a Peter Holden onion. A small one at the back, yeah. Yeah. Different size, and there's a label in there which is telling me that's what it is, so I don't forget. But these are all going to be hopefully. Um, I only put these in just before Christmas. I held back and held back to make sure that they were sound yeah. for longer, so they, I was getting a, a better start. So in two of them, two of them, this one now, I noticed one, there's another one, I'm not sure if there's one behind there as well, just starting to shoot. But they've been in probably um, about oh, six weeks, I think, something like that. So they've obviously making, they're making a good route and they're now starting to go, which I'm quite happy about. Good. Now I've moved them all over that greenhouse now into that long one where that bed was because I've covered that now with um with with a weed control. Um well I covered it straight away after after I turned it all over and put the beds in. Um so I've got the shallots on there and all the ends are on there and I put some hoops in and I got fleece over it because it's gonna be um, gonna go down to about minus one tomorrow, I think, with us. Yeah. I don't know whether you love it you love it probably less than that, I would think. We got it tonight at forecast minus two. Yeah, frost in the morning. I know. I think it's forecast till till Thursday. Yeah. Um. You ain't I got it so bad I didn't down put there. Huh? You ain't got it so bad that you pay your rates. No, we won't have too. it. We won't have it so bad this time. No. We do our power rates up here. Yeah. That's I'm just near fireworks. Yeah, and um, I, I did. I, I'm using um, obviously Calagas propane heaters. Yeah. The thing, but bloody hell, the price is, is astronomical now. Ninety quid I paid for a bottle. Oh, Benny. They, they were seventy you, quid last year, and now they've gone up to ninety. I bought two that? bottles. What size bottle, Dennis? That's forty-seven kilogram. That is. Oh, that's big. Big ones. Good. They're hard. They're hard for me to work at the moment because I like I'm like seventy-six. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, but the garden is 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 difficult. Um, but I've, I've got them down now on the lower level, right outside the greenhouses. I've got a bottle in there. And I've got a gauge on it as well, so I can tell where I am, roughly. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll probably get till about maybe Wednesday before it, uh, it starts to go out. But it's just too much money, really, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. What I was going to ask you, Mick, you know you've got those um, bloody old light bulbs. Yes. Bombs. When when you plant in those and and you know where do you plant that many? I mean, first thing I do, gladly wise, is the cormlets. That'll be the end of Feb. But then we'll be in a cold greenhouse in, in, yeah. the, in the florist buckets or whatever. But the gladdies. Yeah, do you put them in pots or, or, or do you. No. No, that, that goes straight out in, in the planting hole. Right. But the, the and how, how far apart would you plant those in if you're going to show them? Mine are about nine inches. Right. Some people do it closer. But I want to air, air move them around my. Do you, do you have to put sticks on those as well? Uh, you can either plant them deeper, then earth up, trench up, like they do in, in India, or all, all the, the gladiolo farms there. They earth up the fields, and that, you know, like earthing up taters, and that yeah. holds them all up. But obviously, uh, if, if I've got a small raised bed, which I have, yeah. I've got some in small raised beds. You can't really earth up much, so I came mine. Yeah, yeah. Because they they put out of a tall, taller cane in there I want, so when the fl flower does start shooting up, I can tie that up as well. Because if I know I've got a good one, yeah. then I'll, I'll, I'll tie the lot up just to help them to keep straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I cane it every one. So what what, what date does you will show on? Is that is that mid September? It's the first Saturday September. So the when second. we when we do plant the the, the corms for that show. I didn't even bung it on the calendar yet. I'll work it out for the next sesh. All right. Ninety days. It's just a topic where you know you can you can you can do do a discussion on it like a. Yeah. And it's nice but nice to know you know. Anything that I do gardening wise anyway, I bung it on my Zoom. Yeah. But uh. uh the the other thing I don't know whether anybody saw um. Chris Evans's video, uh, YouTube video today. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's on in a bit. I've got yeah. to advertise it for him. I did. I did uh, message him about it because um, when you're planting on on a YouTube video like that, and you can see this, the the size of the onion, and 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 you know, you look at the root system and everything. Yeah. It's nice to know what the date is that he's doing it. Yeah. Um, so I did ask him to put the dates on when he's making the do uh, the YouTube video to put the date on uh. it. Good idea. So, like John Salisbury always does it. Yeah. So you, you can see the progress of, of the onion uh, at that particular time then, can't you? Yeah. And you can see what's what. But, you know, that's just... Lovely. Anybody got any questions for Dennis or we get old on him? Dennis, you covered everything. Good man. Cheers, Dennis. Oh, I know what he's... Cheers, cheers, mate. Good lad. First you want me to walk and talk, then you want me to sit still and keep quiet. I thought that was good. <laughs> this will be a good film. In cinemas 2023. Well, a bit more cutting back. I forget what this little chap was here. Somewhere between a fox glove and... I don't know. I don't know what it was, chap. A little... Uh, Red cup with a white inner flower. I couldn't have one back then. Sorry? Fenstermer. God knows. I don't know. That's what I thought, Paul. Looks like my Fenstermer. Oh. Like well, I don't know why they chop him down. So I chop him down now. <clears throat> and you'll see all the bulbs are starting coming through. That's why I wanted that wall done out the road. So I don't really trip nothing. In the last wall there. So that one's done in between this lot and that lot. Just this one end now. Just that one end of this bit. Uh, I can only go in about three and a half foot because the greenhouse is this side. So it's just what I can reach in. But uh, that's enough for me. Right, Rusham is taking this on for the housework. So I've got to net it. Luckily, I found enough. I took this off the raised beds to put on here. And some off cuts just to fill the, the big raised bed. Got away with that. 
Oh, right, that's sorted Rushen out. That's then what doing. New shoots coming through the big canners. As we can see there, there's one there coming through. And you can see them two there. Now this is um still in as it was put in, if that makes sense. Meaning I watered nothing. You ain't supposed to wait to nothing. But just to them do their own thing, which is what he's doing. He's ready to spurt, so he spurred him. I might chop these off a bit more, just in case they get it. You better give it a crap on the top of them. If I chop them off, way, it'll get a nice clean cut again. I just want to get rid of that crap, just to look after them that, that bit more. Yeah, you, know, you can see them a bit better now. But this is the one where I put um, three canners in the Durban. Love them. First one, still love them. Good on you, Sue. There's my fig. That's what he, I want him to turn out like. And he'll be ready for our show as well. That's why I let him. Never been into figs, i.e. taste wise. But uh, these are supposed to be, because I know that the brutes I used to have. And the taste now is supposed to be super. So that's what he looks like. So. There's a bit of info for you. So Someone's got a um, the um, the mic on. Can you turn your mic off, please? Marion's got. Anybody see who it is? Can cause your diarrhea. Someone's got told me your school attendance could be better. Yeah. Oh, Can't turn your mic off. They said you were school material. Then Gordon Bennett. I went to grammar school. It was far from posh. I will take some blood samples, then we can work out how to get you better. better. Okay. Anyway, this is Trujin for our show. Long maintenance. Oh, I you came back. No. Never saw that. Are you there? Can you mute yourself for us, please? <laughs> Again. Good evening, Mara. You are still prohibited. If you go on the participants, you should be able to do it, Mick. I've tried it before. If I come off the page, I can't get back on it again. No. But you were sent. Can't. And we must accept what we are sent. I have my bed in which I got in here. Good job. Plus, if you got a good eyesight, your coming through. His parents, two brothers. His father saw us once about a skin condition two years ago. I should pay a tactful home. The frost's job to all the results of the Put all these I'll, off. I'll also write directly to the council about this scheme. It should run at the start of every school term. It's been eye opening. Message her as well, mate. I'm trying to get her on uh, my phone. Tom, how do you do it? Could it be more fine? So these lot are going to get chopped off. That's one of those creatures. Chopped off there. Because I've chopped the reds off, I'm going to give them a, a nice um, pick me up, which is one drop of liquid fish. There is one drop mm. per litre of rainwater. Then that'll get mixed up. Kath! You should feel much better. Try not to cuss. Meantime, we'll move you to your own room. My phone's crap. I called those. Nothing but a big mistake. No, no, you're not. Not a carry on. Not very well, which makes. Right, well, I've chopped all the, the dead crap off this. In two days' time, you'll feel different. I'll so just give him another checking growth. I'm now going to give him a, a pick me up. I eat a feed. When I'm better. Hoping he'll come through. Can I see my baby? 
uh, all me canners which are on the bottom of the other side have now lifted them once I've got the space on the top. Also, I've chopped all the rubbish off them so you can see there. Right, this is little. I've noticed some cheap porridge oats that I'm starting having. I've come about 70p, which is on the for me. That's what I'm using for the compost. Where's Mrs. Fletcher? Crap, I thought I'd gone then. She left. Kath! Did you want to say about Joey? Good in aura. He isn't well. All the cannons are bunged on the top of here. Presume Joey has been carrying the burden since your wife left. I do what I can. I don't like to go out. We're fine. Oh, sorry. If you remember last year, Joey maybe told me. There are eight. The uh, Gladio yeah, like Corbett's. Because I could still walk no, up down there. So I'm going to take all this, this thing you know, off. Don't you try and tell me what it's like? Level that. Well, thanks. All these are them canners down the park. Old Maril. Still in there. Yeah. I'll see if these start spurting later on. If they do, if they can get away with that in the open, as that is there, then I shall leave my canners out. Right, this is a good mate. I'm John Wick. Love his guns. I killed his dog day, they so he killed them all. Good luck. Teacher, well, I've got some talks coming up. She's just so, Tesco too. spent coffee grounds. I have to get all the crap out, obviously. Open the tea bags up or coffee bags, where we're for them. Break all these up by hand. Show it. Looking after his brothers, cooking, cleaning, Go back on that one. Air circulation again. It's ain't gonna get wet or anything. I'm passing. Kath Holmes! Gordon. Right, luckily, because I'm still nimble, I can get in there and I'm going to wallop these fences. These have been dried out now. It's been dry for four or five days, so I'm going to wallop them. Yes. Peace, Kath, thank you. Right, because I'm getting... Couldn't get at that one there. So I'll give Paul a shout, he was free. So, because I walloped this one, you can just about see it on the top of that. So I've took him out. We're going to lift that one out there, put him in there, and then that one that's been walloped there. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it did. I've got bramble today. <laughs> Yeah, you got, room. You got room. shorts on your plonker. That's, that's next door. You can put the fruit trees there. <laughs> yeah, use. So there's that panel we've just put in. So now I can get down there and wallop that. Cheers for that, Paul. Boston. Look at that. All done. Let's work. I come in the house, um, was it two days ago? And then um, the sun was out. About 10 o'clock, I was in the kitchen on, on the cop. Pet says, I come here in the greenhouse. I says, I caught up. This is what? First time ever in my life that I've caught up. And when I said it, I thought, first time ever. And it reminded me. And it was. I ain't got the asshole down the plot and the asshole I'm looking after me. So all this is done now. So that's been walloped. Obviously that looks a bit fresher because it is fresher. But all the back's been walloped as well. Similar colour and that more. Now, the raised bed there, do I wallop that? Same as the fence panels or do I wallop that the same colour as these yes the pots right the difference up then because luckily them pots are similar to these these are not the same colour 
all oh. over. Different column. I said, then, Rag, if we don't get the gold award. Yeah, well. I thought that. Next door's pulled it. So, that's the lot done now. All up there. Perfect. Let's go back on that one. Uh, there's quite a few of these tubs, Dennis. That's why I stake everyone as well. You know, as you can see, I ain't got the well, picture on this, but I can't earth up. That's why I put canes in. My gladys. Well, it means this chalk. This one is chalk in Feckenham Village Hall. This is uh, Monday, 20th of Feb. This one is, what's it near? Symmetry in Redditch and uh, Alcester. It's a, a WI group. 8 pm. Cake. 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 Oh. Cake. And it's, it's a fiver entry. This is a fiver. That's a bit steep. It's a, used to keep all the men away. <laughs> it is a <laughs> WI group. But, uh, that's, a, that's a new one for me, so I'll give forward to that one. And then Chris Evans, he started putting uh, his own YouTube post on. And luckily I caught it last week when he put it on, as Dennis mentioned tonight. And I says, can you speak proper? Couldn't understand the word, what he was saying. He's a uh, black country and all, but a uh, good lad. At least he's got the guts to share what he does. It's quite a few uh, people about. Don't tell your sod or we're doing it Chris Mark. I'll bung the link on for you next year. Uh, next year. Next Zoom proper. Doghouse, love it. Uh we used to be this is um a nation well we used to be a nation of animal lovers, dog lovers. If you remember me complaining about uh, some arsehole on top of our estate a week or so ago, stuck more. We started letting off display fireworks, the loud and uh, four times during the day at uh, lengthy intervals. And he was not breaking the law. But anyway, I got the cops to visit him. Because if they didn't, I was going to go up with uh, somebody else if you don't sort it we will so they went up but that they just um warned him that um not smart just over the peace and all this crap because he'd had that many like the council that many complaints so then i messaged my local mp which is james morris and uh, explained to him says i know he's not breaking the law but he got all the display fireworks meaning they're louder this is the bangs I'm on about, not normal pockets, fireworks, just the, just the bangs I'm worried about. Explain to him, and he come back. Uh, firework regulations allow fireworks from home to be used, sold during traditional firework periods of bonfire night, New Year's Eve, Chinese New Year, which we finished tonight, and I heard them earlier on, and Diwali. So now these come under English, British, whatever you want, to, which is obvious. So we've got to look after them as well. And uh, I'm not going to say that. Right I need to get a petition up. I've looked into it. It took me that long, just getting word round and getting bit. Oh, anyway. Paul, just for you, another delivery. I missed that box. <laughs> one more fruits. This is the one I showed you from the I show you. I feel <laughs> You got more fruits in Tesco? So there's my black currant, the late one. Well, fruit in uh, early August. But I want to try and keep the chap to keep doing so I want to look after him pocket. There's my other corn, sweetheart cherry. Late fruiting. Luckily I've got three left. These were a good buy when Wilco bought these out. I should have had more. And they ain't having any more. I've tried them. Same again. 
nice dollop underneath them. Now they're going to have some mug. Bit of straw underneath and then a uh, good old mug. This is a mixture again, as you can see that lot there. The the soil I got out from when I was doing my brickwork, because I got wood chip on the top and it had been mixed with everything else. Plus the compost out there again. Take the top off normal crab. So there are the worms that are going back in there. And I had two lots of this out, good brew. Then two tubs. So I don't really want any worms in. I'm still going to have worms in the tub because the, the eggs that are in here, they're going to hatch out. But the, the worms that I see, I'm going to throw in there. They're going to go back into the compost bin, which they're going in there. Then I'll just turn that tub over just to show you how many is going back in. There's Rushin inspecting me a uh, brew. Put all this lot mixed together. Look at that. Beautiful. You could swim in it. Well, now I'm opening these up. Same again. Uh, he come with a cane in. So I'm, to open it. so I'm just finding the depth. To see how much more a, a growing medium I want to put on under his arrows. So there I've got him, so I'll hold up with one hand and then put the gun in with the other hand. Same again, micro oil has a foam right under his iris. Get in there slowly. The next fill, I shall hold him up level and then start filling and pushing that in down the sides, not plant in itself. Nice and level and that road. Obviously once she's established, oh, that cane's coming out. I mean, it might come out anyway, if you get in a place where there ain't uh, much um, wind at movement, what we see. Top dressed again. Now me other little chaps going in. Exactly the same again. Muck underneath, good bit of mic under him. Well, not a good bit, just uh, good sprinkling. Got to touch a root duff again. Get him that eye to want him, which I'm holding like that. And then just fill around him, pushing down on the side as well, not the plant itself. Good height, perfect. Or just a bugs, I know he's going to drop slightly anyway. Over the, the growing year. Top dress him. A uh, bit of um, Epsom salts again into the water added. Give him a good soaking. Just to get him level. That slab behind is level. This one off a bit. So just to get him level, put a cane under him. And uh, as I mentioned before, because we have got the frosts, these are in the, the greenhouse. Uh, this little chap went and had another look at him, came to his green. Just snapped one off, which he, he did snap straight off, which tells me that that is dead anyway, which I knew it was. But uh, the more that's on the top here, to look after what's below. I was to chop that lot off, then uh, there's more of a chance that he getting get something. But um, stay in there until I want. And this hand during the week, just going through a bit of stuff. Couple year old. I wonder where it was actually. This is all my gladdies, which was uh, no good for the show. It was too early or too late, so I took them up the old folks on top of the road. The missus goes out now, as I did with the mate shopping. When it comes back, the hound can and knows the the sound of the car when he goes in reverse. When he gets excited. So I have to stand up by the table and then I legs it on my shoulders so I can see through the window. There's a course off a chair. I was just standing on the kitchen table there. Right, our general, first general meeting uh, last Thursday for the Garden Club, Come again, Garden Club. And I organised uh, Trevor. Trevor Long to give us a talk. 
from the Kristanth Direct, meaning um, we lost a Kristanth grower. He was a good grower, exhibitor and judge, meaning when he put his croissants in, nobody competed, nobody put anything in. But he put that much in, he, he bought the money in on the night because everything's auctioned off. And now he, he passed away, so we got it. I thought we would, nobody knows, or there ain't many people who grow croissants, so I've got to get him growing. So I've got him early, i.e. February, which is early enough. And I explained to him, give us your tour, and then um, we pay an extra. And off time, we stop for the break and go. Then if we put a little bit of a talk together, explain his horse lot. I've given the date of the show, uh, when the best time for us to plant and have a bit of on exhibited and all this pump. And I've got him for Feb. And then in March, the next talk, we've got um, a tour. I've got a speaker in on the sweet peas. So instead of having one class for sweet peas, I think we've got four now. And he's going to do exactly the same. Tell us when to plant the sweet peas for our show and how to look after them when to pinch out, which is what we want. It's just to get more people in our garden club exhibiting, just to have a go. Because once you have had a go and you've got that first card, even if you come third, you've got something with your name on and it gives you a boost. And that's how you get the ball. So the first one was our mate. And there we are. There's our Trev, he's uh, all set up. There's his projector there. So this is the um, raffle prizes. There's my bottle of whiskey. Next door neighbour bought me. So they know every year. You always have a good turnout on the raffle because everybody wants that. Good turnout. I think it's 36 at the end. Trevor Lawrence, there's two of them. Uh, but that's one of his greenhouses. But a good talk. And he went through everything. Uh, although they look a bit bland, that's only white and green, as you can see there. There is reasons. That was, a say, a normal show where they said, wherever they go, Chelsea, at whatever, was it all. Well, they do, I should say that they do all the shows. But they were a bit bland in the sense there's no colour in them. And uh, they did a display with all the colours in. And they never got a gold medal. So that's the judges, RHS judges, which I've met before, stuck in the ways. And this proved it again. I've told them you will never get a gold medal with that much colour in. Judges don't like this is why you can really have some, some stubborn buggers. So now these are the only colours they use. And that's what they used to put in. That, that, that's what the judges said. Because of these nice bright colours, you'll never get a gold medal. The mind boggles. So that is how they display now, just to get a gold medal. Because if people can, don't forget they're displaying these, advertising their company. If they got a gold medal, people think, oh, they've got a gold, that's, that's a good group. So they've had to do what the judges say, just to get a gold. Well, they still flog these, but they're not on display, they will be in the catalogue. That was half time when the grub was up. Then uh, after the first session, then he explained to us and he dished out all these catalogues free to us uh, of different strains, whatever he's got. But it was a good night, good turnout, went down well. And Paul did his um, last committee meeting. So now, uh, if somebody else is out good in the garden club, then uh, I would show me appreciation. That's why I was paid off when I finished the chairman's job. Hang on, Paul, mate. Down the allot uh, allotment side. I never got a thank you, sod all. But, uh, that's a thanks you get, sod all. Yes, Paul, mate. 
Cool. Got your hand up, mate. If you have any, I'm speaking, you might get on. I said. Yes. That's a drop of it. It's going down nicely, mate. Is it good, man? Yeah. I've got Paul a bottle of brandy because he helped us out um, the interview wise. We got some chip sh stuff for the shed. But uh, if you get a thank you, he might do it again. I didn't got a thank you. So I won't be doing the bloody chamber job in the other plot. Common sense to me. Jared, he's helped me out down the training sheds for moons on a Saturday. Plus on the um, general meeting nights with the raffle, stuff like that, and Sheridan. Here he is. Uh, now we've got him. Um, he, he works now, so I've, I've lost him. But he had a bottle of his favourite tipper as well, whiskey. What was it, 43? 43 it was, yeah, lovely stuff. Oh, uh, it's like a honey whiskey, in it, you say? It is, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, oh. lovely stuff. If you've never Jared. tried it, try it. Uh, is it a bourbon? Jared liked that, so he had that one. Is it a bourbon? Is it a bourbon? I don't know what it is for, to be honest, but it just, it's just wonderful. It's That's the only the thing I can say about it. It's, it's like a, it's like a liqueur whiskey. But it, it's, one place it's, up. You had to go up. Uh, we had, I think we had to go to Tesco. Is it Brawley Bong? Yeah, there's only there's only a few places that sell it, but um, you normally get it in the airport and places like that. Oh. Uh, but um, the only place we found it locally was at uh, Tesco in Dudley. Yeah. Nice drink. Good. And earlier on, uh, Nigel Cole gave us some uh, gladi corms and cormlets. Also, the, the growing destructions for them. So, I dished out them on the night as well. To uh, future gladioli growers, hopefully. Uh, these are the books uh, our Trev dished out. And they got an open weekend. This is a by yo, Andy. Um, we're on 22nd, 23rd of April, between 9 and 4. And you can walk around the, the set up the greenhouse and everything. Obviously, um, I'll just say all the plugs will be on special offer as well. But a uh, Boston turnout. And uh, Chrysanth's direct. It's easy to get the plants off him. Good start. So, let's see. Another little mate I've had to pick up, Savoia, doing the pipe around. We should look at that, don't even have to tell her now. Greenhouse. Right, let's have a look over there. Bit of blossom. This is my peach tree. According to blossom. 50 minimum. Well, it goes down 40. We'll be down to 40 again tonight. It's minus 2. Well, I'm going to keep me. Going through my, um, our show um, schedule. I found this, this one goes back. This is, must have been when I uh, joined the society. And took the chairman's job on. Because we started off as Crazy Royal British Legion. or the Portrait Society. Obviously the, the Legion went bump. That's when we changed to Crazy Garden Club, and then to Collier Garden Club. But as you can see there, we used to have a croissant and veg late show. And we also had, um, so it must have been after this, we had a spring show, the daffodil show. Uh, Lynn went for a walk. I think we fifth went for a walk. I forget when it was. That's it, near Starport or oh, this must have mm. took some time to do this long. I had to settle for a delivery. Someone didn't feel like cooking tonight. <laughs> You're gonna look for you. Well, blow so. Down the shed yesterday, me and Mark had some new canes in for your uh, 
for your eight foot um well that bit what are for your ruddy beans. Find him in the other shed. That's what I'm with you. Uh another talk. This one is in uh you toxic Where am I? This is Thursday, Feb 23rd. I'm going through these because we ain't got a Zoom to after that. This one's on compost. Uh, Stramshaw Village or... Yeah, you toxic. Uh. This is in between Stafford and Derby. Um, 7.30 start. Non-members, three quid. Anybody's interested? Local? Message me. I'll hear all the gum. Six Nations, Boston Games, Hard Luck Wales, Hard Luck England. Good matches, mine. And tonight, I think there was, there was a shock tonight as well, wasn't there? With, uh, there was a crack. Italy crack in the end and France. France versus um, Italy. Cracking uh, game. Was 29. Don't tell 20, me it was crap. It was crap. 24. What's the shot out for you? Cracking game, it's... Oh, love it, I do. Right, next Zoom sesh, Sunday 26th of Feb. Three weeks' time. I'm glad you said a bit. Glad I forgot. Got some of time. We're going away and we got... Any birthday to go on a Sunday afternoon dinner. And that's it, people. Cracking Zoom, mate. Hope you've enjoyed that, enjoyed it. Thanks, mate. Great. Thanks, Mick. Good. Thanks, Mick. Thanks to me, inputters. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Mick. Sorry about the interference of Kath. I saw the <laughs> give it a public warning. <laughs> Kath, look, Paris, young lady. Just cut her off now. <laughs> Kath, <laughs> Kathy, I've now. <laughs> Apologise for the mic. You see that? <laughs> Bloody pounds off. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Kath. Don't do it again. I saw Banya. Yeah, I'm all right. Anybody got anything to say about anything on tonight or about anything any road? Yeah, Steve's <laughs> got his hand up. Sorry, Steve, mister. Your mic's off, Steve. Turn his mic on. You know your Jay Parker's gladdies? Yes. Have you looked on their whole wholesale page? Um, re reference to the gladdies? Yeah. No. Because a friend, a friend of the allotments told me, and I just ordered. Well, I just had. I ordered on Wednesday, and they came Saturday. Yeah. I had a um, hundred gladdies. Yes, you've got Kath. to order them in. You've got to order them in twenty fives. Uh, so I ordered four different varieties, and they cost me sixteen pound ninety. Oh, uh, that's cheap. That's cheap. And that's then you've got your postage on top. You got your postage plus your V8, so come to twenty-six pounds for the hundred. Not bad. It's still like half price. Mm. But you have to the, the smallest quantity you can buy is in twenty-fives. So I bought four another hundred I've got now. <laughs> How many? I bought another that was another hundred I've got to go with the two or three hundred I've already got. Oh gee, we man. <laughs> You keep saying, oh, I've got enough now. I don't need no more till summer comes up. But See, that's on the J, yeah. J Parker's Wholesale. And there's 90, 90 varieties on there. I, I, I don't think the, I've got enough. What you do, don't you? You see so yeah. I'll, I'll have a couple. I've looked on the, the canners and they got many. They've only got what I've already got. See, uh, yeah. yeah. They've got dailies as well on there on the Wholesale page. Uh, but obviously, you've got to pay the VAT and the delivery. Yeah. So, is that that's Jay Parker's wholesale, that is. Is that the sale page? It's not I'll the Jay Parker's... Because I've got the ordinary page, but this is the wholesale, yeah. this is. I'll have to look on that, then. If mm. you have a look on there, there's some good prices on there. Let's have a look. Anybody wants any kind of seed? Let me know. You're no, down the shed on Saturday, Mick? Hey? You down the shed this Saturday coming? 
Yeah, next three Saturdays all. Yeah, I'll see you Saturday then, all right? Okay, mate. I'll be all then calm, it's down. Yeah, Boston. All right. Cheers, mate. Cheers in peace. Another couple of weeks. Cheers in three weeks. Mick? Yes. I might have some more goodies coming up in the near future. Oh, good lad. All right. Cheers, Paul. I'll man. keep you posted. Good lad. Cheers, all. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. 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 Che